done and involved in. Um, why it's important, um, particularly why we're interested in this question as immunologists. <laughs> so here we begin. So life essentially begins with um, a diffusion of sperm in an egg, okay, and this fertilized cell um, divides to become this ball of embryonic stem cells, and these stem cells have the capacity to form all of the cells required for the human body. So essentially, stem cells are the building blocks of life, and not only do they facilitate human development, but also they allow repair and replacement of damaged cells or cells that die or get used up, essentially. Too fast. So <laughs> stem cells um, are different to other cell types in the body, and they're different because they can self renew or copy themselves, but they can also differentiate or become specialized cell types like muscle cells or nerve cells, and therefore they're really important. So there are different kinds of stem cells. Embryonic stem cells, as I've already mentioned, are this ball of cells, essentially a very early embryo. And then we have tissue or adult stem cells, which are found throughout life, both in the fetus, the baby, the child, and the adult. So in, in addition to this, there's a third new type of stem cell called induced pluripotent stem cells, or IPS. And essentially, we can take a skin cell, wave our wand, and program these cells to become more embryonic-like. And essentially, now these cells can give rise to all cell types of the body. So stem cell research has made significant progress in the past 30 years with the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine being awarded to a number of eminent um, stem cell researchers in the last five years, particularly Shin, Shin Yamanaka for the uh, discovery of <coughs> We can use um, stem cells, particularly embryonic stem cells, to inform us about development in biology. We can use stem cell lines to, scr to screen new drugs. And most importantly, they provide a basis for um, cell-based therapy. So we can potentially use these um, stem cell therapies to treat diseases like Parkinson's disease, muscular dystrophy, diabetes, blindness, and the most common form of, of stem cell therapy is bone marrow stem cell uh, therapy of leukemia. So I'm interested in muscular dystrophy. Um, this is a disease caused by a uh, mutation in dystrophin gene, and essentially um, this leads to muscle weakness and wasting. So there are a number of different ways in which we can this. The first is, of course, gene therapy, where you, where you correct the dystrophin uh, mutation, or you can take um, generate healthy donor muscle stem cells from a, a donor muscle biopsy. So this is the, the approach that uh, I have taken, or we have taken in collaboration with some uh, muscle biologists. And basically, we take these generated muscle stem cells, um, and we give those to patients, we inject them to patients in the presence of immunosuppressive drugs. So this provides increased muscle muscle function. Now, why do we need these immunosuppressive drugs? So when we take cells or organs from a, a donor, and we give those to a genetically different patient, the immune system will recognize those cells or tissues as being foreign and will essentially reject them to the body. So there are a number of limitations for our approach. First is that the muscle is, is a huge organ, and we need billions of cells to treat those patients. Secondly, immunosuppressive drugs have side effects. They can be uh, toxic, and also when the immune system is suppressed, this can lead to infections and potentially tumours. So now that we have this IPS technology, we can now use a personalised stem cell therapy model. And so in this slide, we have no genetic differences, and therefore you would think that there would be no problems with the immune response. However, last year it was published in the journal Nature that if you take these IPS cells, in this case for a mouse, and culture them in, in the lab, they actually express these new genes which the immune system has never seen before and essentially recognises them as being foreign and they are rejected. So therefore, we must take a closer look at how the immune system actually sees the stem cells so that we can try to prevent the rejection of stem cell-based therapies um, and essentially reduce the our load of immune suppression. Now, interestingly, there are stem cells which actually produce immune suppressive proteins and essentially can hold or stop the immune system. Now, we understand this well in DISH, um, but we're not so clear about what happens in the mouse or even the body. So in the words of Bertie, a lot done, but more to do. So this is, uh, work is, is a collaboration between uh, researchers, both at NY Youth um, at UCL and indeed Oxford, with funding from a, a range of international and national uh, bodies. And so finally, I can do stem cell research and the importance of immunology in that field. And I'd just like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas.